Well, ladies and gentlemen, as I'm sure you already know, Joe Biden officially stepping down here about a few hours ago. I gave my immediate reaction. Now we've got other stuff trickling in. We've got some polls that people are trying to pull from. I do think it is important. All the polls we're going to be looking at is, you know, kind of a hypothetical situation. It's not Kamala versus Trump, where Kamala is the official nominee or the the what we think is going to be the nominee. Obviously, Biden supporting Kamala, endorsing her. You've also got many other players within the Democratic Party. Apparently not Obama. Now I say apparently because the way things are going today, maybe he will in a few hours. We'll see. But there is also some maybe rumors about Hillary Clinton still possibly being in it in terms of possibly being the candidate. Right now, I do think it is going to be Kamala, though, based off of everything, based off the donor money. The logistics of installing someone else is very hard. And obviously, I mean, this is just such a horrible look. For the Democrats, everything that they've been saying the past two or three years, going back over Biden's statement, it's so hilarious how they're still trying to play this, I'm fine, I just I just can't do it. It's like, dude, no, you can't do it right now. You couldn't do it a year ago. Stop the charade, stop lying, they just cannot stop lying to people. They just, it, they cannot. Every statement is calculated. The only thing they want is power. And even in a statement like that where Biden says, I'm going to finish out the term, he doesn't even say anything I don't think about health or anything like that. Like, oh, I, like, why are you, you know, stepping down? I'm sure that's going to, you know, come out in the next four or five days. It'll be interesting to see how they can spin Biden staying in, not resigning, even though we get a lot of Republicans saying he should resign. My thought is, and maybe this is wrong, but you just put your political hat on and you think, could this be them trying to pull the first female president card again? Now, obviously, it didn't work in 2016, but if it's there and you're the Democrats, do you think of taking it? Maybe that'll motivate more people to vote because that's one of Biden's major issues. He can't get anyone to go out and vote for him because nobody thinks he's going to last another four years or nobody thought that. That's why I thought Biden was going to drop out originally. There was no motivation for people to go vote for him. There was no motivation in 2020. It was, I mean, that election was just a complete mess. Most of the people didn't even go out. They just did the mail-in ballots. Uh, but even the ones that did vote for him, it was really a vote against Trump rather than a vote for Biden. So I do think in terms of Harris over Biden, the thought process of Biden not resigning might be if he resigns and Harris is the president, she's technically the first woman president already and she'll be serving at least until January where Trump might take over if Trump wins so she would have already been a president the thought process is like keep Biden let Kamala run give her all the money and she hasn't become president yet she's still VP until January and then she you know let's say she's wins then she's the first female president so they might be trying to hold that card still um it's they're just all so pathetic it's hilarious to see this oh my god just all their narratives all the crap and it was a, i mean it came out like two or three days ago that biden was going to step down today elon musk said he admitted he knew for like a week and a half that today was going to be the day it's totally controlled by all the elites they're the ones fighting for democracy or so they say but we've caught them and both the supporters them installing you know literally kicking out biden yes they forced him out he said 10 times there's five tweets of biden saying stop asking about it i'm staying in the race and then the next day nancy pelosi says he's got to make a big decision and then he says stop asking about it i'm saying in the in the race and then the next day obama says he's got to make a decision so no they they forced biden out they're anti-democracy. Biden won the primaries fair and square with 14 million total votes, but they knew they couldn't win. And it's not only that, you've also got their supporters now admitting and saying many of them, well, 34% in, in a snap poll, remember they made fun of conservatives when it said, oh, 23% of Trump supporters believe in QAnon. Now we've got 34% of Democrats that think Trump staged the shooting. So they don't think Trump was even shot. They think he staged it for himself. And also we've got the idea of them, now many Democrats coming out and admitting they wish Trump died. They're happy it happened because now there's dialogue and maybe someone else will, will attempt to assassinate Trump. So that's both their party, you know, the leaders. I mean, this has happened now three straight times. It's not one, not two, now it's three. 2016, they gave all the money to Hillary. All the Bernie Sanders supporters who were Democrats admitted this is rigged against Bernie. It's ridiculous. 2020, they forced all of the other candidates to drop out to, to get the vote behind Biden so he could beat Bernie Sanders again. And now in 2024, the, the, the people, I mean, and these, are, these people are just so controlled. They're fighting for democracy. You haven't had a say on who your nominee is in your own party for three election cycles now. 
and they're and it's just anything that the God Obama wants is what these people do. There's just there's no deviation. But no, no, no. We're the cult. They think men can get pregnant. We're the cult. Yeah. Let's take a look at the VP odds. Uh, th this was expected. It's going to be a white dude. I mean, look, it's all it's all white dudes because they, they got to split the ticket. Josh Shapiro from Pennsylvania. I mean, it's it's very even in terms of the odds. This really doesn't tell us much. But but these guys are all from Pennsylvania. Uh, Budicic. I think Budicic would be a bad choice. I think Newsom. There's no way from California. Whitmer's only at five percent. That's interesting. Uh, maybe it's a dual female ticket. They think it's not going to happen, or maybe they don't. Whitmer doesn't want to do it. She wants to run in 2028. But there is also the narrative. I mean, even if you lose, like let's say Whitmer is the VP and she loses, I don't think that would make her more unattractive in terms of a 2028 candidate. She's being installed with like four months until the election, three months until the election. Would they really fault her for losing? Would that take shine off of her? Maybe, I don't know. But it does not seem like it's going to be Newsom at all. And at least according to these odds, probably also not Whitmer. You've got Cooper Shapiro and, and several others up there. So we'll have to see. But right now, it's it's very cloudy. You've got the Biden-Harris campaign co-chair who, who, look at this, it says crying on national television. So this is from, you know, RNC Research, Republican. It's a Republican account. And I thought it was, you know, figuratively he was crying. He was like whining. No, no, no. This guy is literally crying, bawling his eyes out because Biden dropped out. I'm not kidding. I'm going to fast forward this. Here he is. This was a very He's literally crying. It reminds me of the dude that cried in 2020 right after it was announced Biden won. And you've got all those those, those women out, out twerking on stop signs. And this dude's like, it was it was Channel 5, 5 News. He's like, this is so uplifting. He started crying. And we see how that this turns out. It's been a horrible, 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 horrible administration to the point where Obama has to admit this is going to be such a blowout. We actually have to make a change. Like you're the incumbent and you're so horrible, even with the incumbent advantage. We've got to make the change. That's how bad it is. And this dude's just crying and bawling his eyes out. He knows how much of a failure the administration is. And that's why I, he, he's just so hysterical. And, and what a horrible, horrible mess for the Democrats. Take a look at this. Trump favorability. It's improved by nine points. How does that happen? Well, you survive an assassination attempt. It's certainly going to help your favorability rating. And that's exactly what we thought. I wouldn't give Kamala Harris or any Dem a debate at this point. It's not Trump's job to help clean up their mess. This is an interesting perspective. It'll be interesting to see what Trump ends up doing here when it comes to a debate with Harris. Harris is going to want to have, I'm sure, multiple debates. They want her name out there as much as possible. They want as much publicity as possible. Really, it's it's a win-win for them because we already know what the Democrats are going to do. They will compare Harris's debate, and CNN will do this as well. They will compare Harris's de debate to, to Biden's. So as long as she just beats Biden, who is like below the floor in terms of debate performances, that terrible performance, they will see it as a win for Harris. They will say that she beats Trump because it, it's all narrative. That's what debates are. It's all narrative. And CNN, 1,000%, it's going to be a total different reaction after the debate, no matter how well Kamala does. They will say, oh, she did so well. She's younger now. They're trying to use the age thing. Like, oh, now Trump's the old guy. Yeah, Trump just you know, he had his ear shot off and then got up, blood pouring down his face. And, and you know, he, oh yeah, he's real unfit. He's, he just talked for an hour and a half at the RNC. No, he's real unfit. You're right. Um, all their narratives are just crap. Kamala dropped out before Iowa. Yeah, this a lot of people don't forget this. Kamala Harris in 2020, uh, she had a Jeb Bush type campaign or primary campaign. Actually, you know what? I might be disrespecting Jeb there. Because she dropped out like three months before, or two months before Iowa, which is the first primary. It's actually a caucus. So so she didn't even get for, to, for anyone to vote for her. So this is the party of democracy, and their candidate is someone that hasn't received a single vote in a primary or an election. But they're the party of democracy, guys. They're going to save us. Oh my God. So So there's that. And then we also got this. I wonder where on earth you could locate a presidential candidate uh, on short notice who's even more unpopular than Trump or Biden. Well, Trump's actually actually get improving his in approval rating recently. But to be honest, Harris actually does have a better approval rating than Biden. Now, it's not an apples to apples comparison because Biden's the president and he's going to shoulder more of the blame. I think Biden's approval rating is at 37%. But that is a horrible approval rating for a vice president in the shadows and still just... Uh, at 38%. So I don't really think Kamala, in, in terms of Kamala versus Trump, changes much at all based on her approval rating being very similar to Biden. Many people saying 
Kamala would actually do worse. Now, I do think the VP possibly being from a swing state might even that out a little bit because the Biden-Kamala ticket terrible. They would do horrible in the Rust Belt. And I still think she will do horrible in the Rust Belt. But if they do get a governor from one of those states, it might help a little bit. Not to the point where I don't think it changes anything. Uh, as you can see, Trump is trending up in terms of favorability. They had Harris at 35%. I don't know if I believe that, but uh, 81 million votes and he's dropping out. But no, no, no. Biden, he's the most popular president in U.S. history. Literally, Obama had to force him out because he's so horrible and he was going to get crushed by Trump. I think Trump probably would have got 400 electoral votes. I'm not kidding. And even Obama's like, oh my God, you're so bad. You're an incumbent and we have to do this. This is embarrassing. So that's what they did. It's going to be Kamala. She has a 38% approval rating. Yep. And then this is, uh, so we've got some updated chances of winning right now. Donald Trump down a percent. So this is what I expect in terms of the polls. And I'll just tell you guys how they're already going to swing it. I would expect for Kamala to receive a slight bump. Now, there's going to be a lot of people that just totally disregard these polls that we've had because it's a hypothetical Kamala versus Trump matchup. Now it's a, a very likely matchup. So the polls are probably going to be different. And there's going to be a lot of people that don't even look at the polls and, and what's already been out there because it's always been Biden's the president. But if Kamala was, how would you do against Trump? So that's just a different question than Kamala actually being the president or, or actually being the candidate against Trump. Because technically she's not going to be the president. Biden is not resigning because they want that first female pre president. They want that bullet in their back pocket being able to deploy that rather than she just takes over. I know people were saying, well, maybe Harris you know, being president for five months, she gets the incumbent advantage. There's no way. And also she wasn't, there's no democracy involved her getting ele being elected. I mean, even if you go back, it, it gets even worse for Kamala if we go back to Biden choosing her total DEI horrible DEI so bad to the point where there's a black dude you know interviewing Biden and literally telling him like three weeks before he picks his VP you better pick a black woman that's what he said so this is DEI to the extreme where there's literal proof of it in interviews where Biden's talking to these people and they're telling him you're an old white male it's 2020 we're the party of, of you know DEI we're the party of inclusion you're a white male that's minus two points you need to pick a minority female that's plus two and it evens out I, that's what they think. So um, I would expect her to move up a little bit in terms of the polls. And then they'll, they'll argue and they'll be like, well, see, she, she, she's, she's getting a boost. Well, no, Biden was so low in part because the party was split. A lot of Democrats hated Biden. So when the last swath of polls we've seen where Trump's just gone up significantly has been aided by the assassination attempt against Trump, which humanizes him and also by the Democrats being split and, and all the big time Democrats coming out, the establishment ones saying and, and putting less trust into the public, into a Biden presidency, into a, a Biden uh, re-election campaign. So I think she, now that they're all full-fledged behind her, which we, we think they're going to be, who knows? I do think she will move up in the polls a little bit and they'll try and say, oh, she's getting boosted. She's going to do good. I, I don't think so. You've got Michelle Obama at 4%, Newsom at 3%, Hillary. I'd say Hillary's probably the best value there. I don't think it's going to be. I mean, Michelle Obama, it was reported earlier today before Biden even dropped out. She's putting together the entire administration. She's working behind the scenes. So uh, you've also got that. And then we do have the updated betting right here. You can see, not surprising, Kamala up 9% because she's now the candidate for just presidency. Trump right now, plus 1%, 64% chance to win. Kamala at a 28% chance. Obviously, that's very clouded considering you also do have all these other ones here. By, oh, yeah, they took Biden off. They took Biden off. They've got Trump 64, Kamala 28, Newsom a 2% chance, and Michelle Obama also a 2% chance. <laughs> Biden drops out of presidential race. Yeah, that's 100% chance at this point. And then also you do have the swing states. I don't think this really matters right now. We have to wait for a lot. You can see the presidency, Republican, 65% chance. The Senate, very likely to be a Republican. The House, I think as long as Trump wins, they'll win the House. Republican sweep, a 42% chance of that. The swing states, again, we're going to have to wait to, to see. But I don't think uh, this, this hurts Trump at all in Georgia. If anything, it helps him slightly. I think it helps him in Nevada. I think it helps. We'll see, but I think it probably helps him in Arizona. She's going to beat to death abortion. So that's going to be something. I mean, that's what Biden was doing. But now that this is, you know, it's, it's a female, it's different. Uh, Wisconsin, they've got basically tied. I think Trump's up there. Michigan, similar. And Pennsylvania, I'm surprised these, these are this close. But uh, either way, we will have to see uh, what ends up happening. And obviously, just to quickly look at this, I've, you know, I'm going to give everyone, whenever the updated stuff comes out where it's the updated prediction, Kamala versus Trump, 
I will show everyone all the states, but right now they just don't have enough polling in any of these states. And this was the final tally we got on the potential Joe Biden versus Donald Trump matchup. Donald Trump destroyed Joe Biden so badly, the Democratic establishment forced him to drop out of the race when he did not want to. He put out many statements, at least eight or nine, that he was staying in, that he was the guy and they just had to totally pressure him out because Trump was beating him to a pulp. It was not close, and that needs to be on the record. It, we ended off here the Trump the Trump Biden you know part two rematch. Trump had an 83% chance, Biden had a 17% chance. Just crazy for a Republican who's not even an incumbent to sit at those numbers at this point. So that's documented now, and 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 so Biden had no chance of beating him, and that's that's part of the reason why. The Democrats smartly moved on, and now they're going to try and, you know, reignite the campaign. I don't think it's going to work, but either way, guys, that is the current situation. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.